Here is an example where you're being asked of three things. The first, to identify the limiting reactant. The second is to calculate the moles of excess reactant that remains after the reaction is over. And three, to calculate the mass in grams of product that is formed. Before you do anything, you have to start with a balanced chemical equation. This equation involves zinc metal, so that's solid zinc, being added to solid sulfur, which is S8. They react together to form solid zinc sulfide. So go ahead and take a moment and write the balanced chemical equation for that. As you are checking your proper formula for zinc sulfide, remember that zinc sulfide is an ionic compound, and with ionic compounds, you have to do the charges first. Zinc has a 2 plus charge, it always does, it's a Zac element, and sulfide has a negative 2 charge. The charges cancel out, leaving you with the ZNS. Here is the balanced chemical equation. Now when we do a limiting reactant problem, you are usually given two different reactant amounts to start off with. So imagine that you're a scientist, you're mixing some zinc and some sulfur, and you're making zinc sulfide. Well, if I were to give you two moles of zinc and one mole of sulfur, and you need to figure out which one's gonna run out first, this is how you would do that calculation. Start off with one of these values. It doesn't matter which one you start off with, but I usually just pick the first one. So there is our starting point, 2.0 moles of zinc. The next step is to do a multiple ratio between the two reactants. So I'm going to compare 8 moles of zinc to 1 mole of sulfur. 8 moles of zinc to 1 mole of sulfur. When you complete that calculation, you've just calculated how much sulfur is needed if you start with two moles of zinc. Now we can compare the amount that's needed to the amount that's actually available. So if you read back in the problem, there's 1.0 moles of sulfur that's actually available, but we need 0.25 moles. And you ask yourself, do we have enough? Yes, we do. And because we have enough sulfur available, that means sulfur, S8, is in excess, and zinc is the limiting reactant. The second question in this problem reads, how many moles of excess reactant remain? You could almost just use some um, simple common sense here. If you have one mole available and you only need 0.25 moles, you just subtract the two values from each other. Here is that calculation thoroughly written out. Available amount minus needed amount, that gives you the amount of excess, and we calculate there is 0.75 moles, there will be 0.75 moles of sulfur in excess. The last part of the problem asks you to calculate the mass of product that is formed. So I'm going to go back one slide so we can look at the equation again. We are going to calculate how many grams of ZNS is formed. And the starting point of our problem, the starting point of our GWR problem, is going to be the amount of limiting reactant available. There is 2.0 moles of zinc available, and zinc is the limiting reactant. So as I fast forward just a little bit, Here's the how-to, how to calculate the amount of product. How to calculate the amount of product, you need to start off with the amount available limiting reactant and um, go ahead and do the GWR calculation there. The given is the amount of available limiting reactant. The want is grams of zinc. And the relationship is going to be between these two substances, zinc and ZNS. There are 8 moles of zinc, there are 8 moles of ZNS, which means we have an 8 moles of zinc to 8 moles of ZNS ratio. Now I want to warn you that in previous slides, it looks like there might be a little typo here. In the previous slides, you saw the actual number 2.0 moles, and so this should be a 2.0 moles here. So keep in mind, our final answers should be in two sig figs. That's just a typo. Now for the rest of the relationships. We see the unit of grams next to ZNS, which is a hint that we need to calculate the molar mass of zinc sulfide. So get those periodic tables and calculators out. We're going to add up the mass of zinc 
to the mass of a sulfur. And when we do that, we end up with this relationship, one mole of zinc to 97.446 grams of zinc sulfide. All right, now we can go ahead and place our numbers in our dimensional analysis problem, always making sure our units cancel out diagonally. See how we have moles of zinc and moles of zinc, and moles of zinc sulfide, moles of zinc sulfide, grams of zinc sulfide. When we type this into the calculator, we can type in two times eight, times 97.446 divided by 8 and the calculator value is 194.892 but the answer rounded to two sig figs is 190. Two sig figs because if you remember me saying earlier there's actually a typo right here instead of TWO representing two I'm going to go back so I can show you. The question should have read 2.02 sig fig. So my bad about that. And that's it.